let's take one more example let's say i want to set the frequency to 23.45 kilohertz so what will i do i'll say 23 and there is a point button here point 45 and remember my range is kilo so i'll say shift kilo so what you can see now is 23.45 kilohertz so everything is displayed on this display so you can read out so frequency is done waveform is selected now comes the voltage we would insist all of you not to go with the voltage readings given out by this display but i'll just tell you how to view it so you can see a button here which is dot and above that v bar f is written so by default it will give out the frequency the moment you press the shift and press this button this shifts to voltage mode so let's see now you can see this display is shifted to voltage mode now it is reading out 1.36 now how do we change it we can change it by using this amplitude adjust you can see a button knob here which is amplitude adjust i'll vary it you can see the voltage getting varied there so this is the voltage knob okay so we got to know how to set the frequency a specific frequency how to vary the voltage and how to select the waveform supposingly i have already set the frequency okay so let's go back to this frequency mode now in the sense the display is now in the frequency so only the display values changes nothing else is going to change when you press this shift and this button okay so now let's say i have fixed the frequency to 23.45 kilohertz now i want to increase it increase in the sense i don't want to use this button but i want to you know vary it slowly so how do i do it Starts. so we can use this knob to vary the frequency so if you can see slowly the frequency is getting changed 6972 73 so whatever frequency you want in steps of very small values you can vary this and change the frequency so this is advisable or we can use this particular knob when you want to change the frequency very slowly so let me put this to 100 hertz and see how we can use this suppose if i want 101 kilohertz i'm sorry 110 kilo hertz i can vary this and set it 20 30 40 50 60 so in such cases this knob is used if you want to go for a very specific value you can use these number parts and you can press shift and select the particular range so this is how we basically use the signal generator yeah now the next important uh, equipment in this laboratory is the cathode ray oscilloscope all of us know when we do something in the laboratory if i want to view the waveform obviously i would require a screen and that is provided by this uh, cathode ray oscilloscope so this is basically a crvo and this is a dual channel CRO with a frequency of 30 megahertz. Okay, so this can give out or this can display a waveform which has a frequency up till 30 megahertz. That's the meaning of this 30 megahertz oscilloscope. Now, as I said, this has got two channels. So what we'll be doing is I'll be telling you how basically one channel works. This is which is channel one for us. If you understand the operation of this particular channel, channel one, the same thing will be applicable even to channel two as well. Okay, so what end all of that? One is Whenever you write a waveform, you can just have a look at this. Whenever you write a waveform, what will you do? You will first write the x-axis, then you will write the y-axis, and then you will write the waveform. So x-axis is basically indicates the time value. Y-axis would either indicate a voltage or a current. In our case, we basically concentrate always on voltage. So the scope always indicates a voltage value. So voltage and time values are very important. So even when it comes to CRO, as we want time information as well as the voltage information, this should somehow tell us like what will be the time duration and what will be the voltage. So for that we have this particular knob which is volts knob and this knob which is for time knob. Remember time knob is common to both the channels but voltage knobs are independent. You will get to know shortly why we require this voltage knob as well as the time knob. So, to, so this is about the basic thing. Now coming to the first channel, let, let us concentrate only on this part. I would want you people to concentrate only on this part. Okay. So you can see two small buttons here. Above one of the button, GD is written. Above and below the other button, AC and DC are mentioned. So what is this ground? So let me press this ground. What I can see is a green line, which we call it as trace in oscilloscope language. So this is a trace. Now the moment you press the ground button, so what will happen? A reference line is set like this. So whatever you write on the sheet, always you will have a reference line. So the same kind of reference, will, reference line will be shown here. Now you can set this particular reference line 
to any of the horizontal lines on this oscilloscope. So for that, I'll be using this Y position. So what will I do? I can move it up and down and I can select any of the horizontal line and choose that as my reference line. So once you fix this, I would insist you people not to change the reference line of it. So now the reference line of channel 1 is fixed. How do you do it? By pressing the ground button. Once you finish it, you can release it. Now let us say for the time being, I am working only on channel 1. I do not want the other channel. So what will you do? There are three buttons here. Channel 1 bar 2, dual and add. For the time being, let me not worry about this add. So the dual button is pressed. The moment dual button is pressed, it is going to choose both these channels. But as I told, we are interested only in channel 1. I will release the dual button. So what has happened? Now only channel 1 has been selected. If you want only channel 2, you can see the first button here. The moment you press it, channel 2 will get selected. If you can see, this trace 2 is coming into picture now. So anyways, I am interested only in channel 1. So this should be in the release position. Dual should also be in the released. Add anyways, by default it will be released. If it is pressed, you will have to release it. Now the CRO is operating only in channel 1 mode. In the sense, only channel 1 is coming into picture. So now I think you are clear with all these basic things about channel 1. Whatever has been told relevant to channel 1 is as well applicable to channel 2 as well. Absolutely no change in it. Now let's try to visualize a waveform. So for that, I'll take this as a reference again. You can see a waveform written here with a peak voltage of 10 volts and let's say with a frequency of 1 kilohertz. So the frequency is set to 1 kilohertz. The frequency is 1K and the peak voltage, Vm is this positive peak or negative peak which is equal to 10 volts. So let's try to visualize this on the CRO. So what will I do? I will be requiring a signal generator. I will be requiring the CRO to view the waveform. Signal generator to generate this waveform and CRO to view this waveform. So let's do it. How do you do it? So we can interconnect the two equipments using a wire which we call it as a probe. A probe will have two terminals, positive as well as negative. As you can see, red always indicates positive, black always indicates negative. So what I'll do, I'll be worried about, I'll be worrying only about one of the channels. So let's say channel one. I'll connect one probe to the signal generator. And please have a look at where I'm connecting it. So in the signal generator, you should be connecting it to this point, mains. So this is where I can take out the signal being generated by this generator. So I'll take this. I will connect one probe to this notch which is channel 1, I will take the positive of this, I will take the positive of this and just connect it. Now this is a crocodile clip, I will just connect these two together. Then I will take the negative of this and the negative of this and connect it like this. Now what you can observe, the connection is done, the supply of the CRO and the signal generator is on but still I am not able to get the waveform. And remember the ground is released. It means that the CRO is now in the AC mode. The second button, which I forgot to mention, is basically AC and DC. If you release it, if the button is in the released position, it is in AC mode, which is normally the case when you want to view sine waves or other you know, alternating uh, waveforms. The moment you press it to DC, it shifts to DC mode. If you want to measure DC voltages, you can measure it as well. But anyways, let's keep it to AC mode. So the point here is, the connection of both these are done, but still we are not able to see the waveform. The reason behind that is, in this signal generator, there is a button here, which is indicated as output button. If the light is not glowing above this button, it means that the signal generator is not ready to give out the signal. So you should press this and you should see the green light coming out. Only then we say that the signal is coming out of the signal generator. Now we can observe this waveform. If you are able to observe the waveform, there is some waveform. But remember, the graph which I showed should have a peak voltage of 10 volts, which means peak to peak of 20 volts and a frequency of 1 kilohertz. Now, how will I set the frequency to 1 kilohertz? We all know I press 1, shift, kilohertz. The frequency got selected or got fixed to 1 kilohertz. But how do we set the voltage to 10 volts peak? There is one way of doing it. Shift, volt per volt bar frequency. When you press that button, you will be able to see the voltage readings. So let me set this to 10 volts. But again, I am insisting you people not to go with this reading. You should always measure the voltage 
on the CRO. What CRO gives, that will be the actual value. So for the time being, anyways, I've set it to 10 volts peak. Let's see what is coming out on the CRO. We will have to measure it. So for that, what is important is this particular knob which we have here, which is volts per division knob. We need to see the position of it. If you can see a blue marking here, which is acting as an indicator, it is pointed towards this 5 volts per division. What is the meaning of that? If you can see, there are many boxes on this CRO screen. Every box, vertically or horizontally, indicates one division. So from here till here is one division, here till here is another division, here till here is third division. So there are many divisions as such. If there is 5 volts per division, it means that this one full division is going to indicate 5, next full indicates one more 5. So in total this becomes 10, 15, 20, likewise it keeps going. Now the point here is, I have set there the peak voltage as 10 volts. I need to get the confirmation that whether this peak is also 10 volts or not. Mind you, we already have set the reference voltage, reference line to this. So this will be my reference horizontal line, x-axis. So the positive half is sitting on this line. This is negative half, this is positive half. So this positive half should be covering how many divisions? Can you please let me know that? Please do some mind calculation and tell me how many divisions this particular positive half should cover if at all the peak voltage has to be 10 and for that you should have this as a reference. One division corresponds to 5 volts. So it means this entire one vertical line or box is 5 volts. So if it has to become 10 volts, the positive half cycle should cover two full divisions. Only then you can say that as 10 volts. So now the things are very clear. As I told, please don't go with the signal generator voltage reading. The CRO is showing some other reading, but the signal generator is showing 10 volts. So that is where we basically go wrong if you go with the signal generator reading. So I insist not to go with signal generator. So let's come back to this. So I have to set this now to 10 volts. So what will I do? I'll adjust the signal generator volts per, I mean amplitude. I'll vary the amplitude knob in such a way that the voltage increases. Now we can see the slowly the voltage is increasing. So it went up. Now what you can observe is a peak voltage of approximately 10 volts. So it has covered approximately 10 volts. So let's take one more value. I want to fix up the voltage value to 2 volts let us say. Or let me say 1.5 volts. What will I do? I'll have to choose an appropriate scale. As we do in case of graph, we'll normally go with a appropriate scale for x-axis and y-axis. Now in case of the second example, where I have to set the voltage to 1.5 volts peak. So example is Vm is 1.5 volts now. So can you tell me on the graph sheet, if you want to select or if you want to plot 1.5 volts peak, what will be the y-axis scale? Because y-axis indicates voltage scale. So what will be the y-axis uh, scale? One unit is how many volts will you select? The best scale would be, I would prefer 0.5 volts. I hope all of you agree to it. So this is on the graph. If you come to CRO, what will you do? You will say 0.5 volts per division. Because I'm writing it as one unit here, but in case of CRO, I'll use a different terminology which is division, that's all. Unit and division, one and the same. So what will you be doing now? So this, so this particular knob, what you have, you have to shift it to 0.5, which means that you're going to select the scale to 0.5 now. After selecting it to 0.5, what are you supposed to do? You should check whether the waveform positive half covers how many divisions to make the peak voltage 1.5? Scale is 0.5. So how many divisions the waveform should cover in the positive so that it becomes 1.5? 3 times of 0.5. So it is 3 into 1.5 becomes 1.5. So you should see to it that this waveform positive half cycle covers 3 full division so that it becomes 1.5 volts peak. So anyways, the waveform has gone beyond the, you know, the screen. So we'll have to bring it back. So I'm going to reduce the voltage now. You can see the voltage is getting reduced now. Slowly it is getting reduced. So till what value will you change? You're going to change this up till the voltage becomes 1.5. So if you can see now, this is the reference line. I'll release the ground. You can measure. I'll put this exposition to this point so that you can have a reference starting from here 1, 2 and 3. It has covered 3 full divisions into 0.5 is 1.5 volts. 
So it is 3 divisions into 1.5 volts per division gives you 1.5 volts as a peak value. So this is how you set the voltage in case of CR1. Likewise, you can as well measure the frequency also. We will see that in the later part when it really, you know, comes into the picture. Okay. So for the time being, these are the things that you need to know. Thank you.